Thank you. And thank you also for uh, the invitation uh, to the organizers uh, to speak about uh, the immune system in MDS pathogenesis. So uh, I'll try to summarize the evidence that we have uh, for immune pathology in MDS, um, present some hypotheses of uh, MDS immune pathogenesis, and uh, draw the dynamics of MDS progression in uh, an immunological uh, point of view. Um, and I'll also summarize the cellular and humoral immune aberrations that have been described in MDS so far, and summarize. So uh, there is evidence for immune pathology in MDS uh, regarding immune dysregulation. And we can see this in the clinic with patients that uh, often have autoimmunological manifestations. It has been described that 10 to 30 percent can have these manifestations. And in a recent uh, publication by Kumroki, uh, um, on a cohort of more than 1,400 patients from uh, Lee Moffitt Cancer Center in Florida and uh, King's College London, uh, showed that 28% uh, of MDS patients uh, have autoimmune manifestations. Uh, most uh, common was hypothyroidism, uh, which is also common in the general population, but still uh, other um, diseases like uh, lupus and uh, vasculitis, hemolytic anemia, can occur in these patients. Uh, also the fact that uh, immunosuppressive therapy is effective in 20 to 30 percent of MDS patients leads uh, the thoughts uh, to, towards the immune pathology and uh, immunological pathogenesis in MDS. And uh, the response rate uh, of this treatment is even higher if uh, one selects patients uh, that are younger, have more hypoplastic bone marrow, and uh, HLA-DR15 positive uh, patients with uh, favorable risk cytogenetics. Um, so, um, of course, uh, due to neutropenia, patients also have increased risks of infections, um, and that can also be a clinical sign of immune dysregulation. Um, the laboratory findings uh, show that uh, abnormal antibodies are present in patients, and actually one of the first publications in this field by Mufti and the co-workers in 1986 uh, showed the presence of autoantibodies against GMCSF in MDS patients and also correlated with poor survival. And uh, increased plasma free light chains, both kappa and lambda, can be present in more than 40% of MDS patients. And also, uh, it has been described that enhanced uh, uh, signaling uh, through innate uh, immune pathways, like the toll-like receptors, uh, leads to altered productions of cytokines as my uh, pre the previous uh, speaker also presented uh, elegantly, and um, which f favors a pro-apoptotic environment in low-risk MDS especially. And there have been described aberrant proportions and numbers of various immune cells, both uh, for in, from the innate and adaptive immune system. And uh, especially uh, expansion of T cells with restricted T cell receptor diversity, so called oligoclonal T cells, have been uh, described in most MDS patients, even regardless of type and stage of disease. And these cells are belonging to the CD8 uh, positive, the cytotoxic T cells. Um, also, in MDS, it is uh, certain that we have defect anti-cancer immune defense. Uh, the clinical evidence for that is increased risk of acute myeloid leukemia, and also that drugs that are improving high-risk MDS also 
show immune modulating effects. Unfortunately, I don't have time today to go through the details of this, but that's also a very interesting field. And uh, the final evidence is that to cure MDS, you actually need to change, to, to change the immune system, to replace it with a healthy um, immune system by allogeneic bone marrow transplant. And uh, in the laboratory findings, uh, evidence for defective uh, cancer immune defense are upregulated immunosuppressive cells and mediators which mostly is in, seen in high-risk disease. So we divide the cellular anti-cancer immune system in innate and adaptive, where uh, uh, the innate consists of myeloid phagocyting cells and lymphoid natural killer cells. And the uh, myeloid cells can be divided into pro-inflammatory and immunosuppressive ones. Uh, where um, monocytes and macrophages type 1 and mature D cells are immunogenic in cancer immune response, whereas uh, myeloid-derived suppressor cells and macrophages type 2 and immature dendritic cells are immunosuppressive. Uh, the adaptive anti-cancer immune response is based on uh, the, the response from T cells, also can be divided into pro-inflammatory uh, T helper 1, 2, cytotoxic 1, 2, and T helper 17, and regulatory T cells that are the immunosuppressive ones. So depending on, uh, there are a lot of uh, different hypotheses regarding uh, how immune system is involved in uh, MDS pathogenesis. And most conflicts are <laughs> regarding the primary event, uh, where we have the hematopoietic stem cell or progenitor cell and uh, the T cell. We don't know really what uh, happened first. Um, there might be, as has been described previously today, genetic lesions in the stem cell compartment that lead to expression of leukemia-associated antigens and an anti-cancer immune response that lead to inhibition of hematopoiesis and autoimmunity. Uh, but also some uh, researchers uh, uh, postulate that uh, there might be a change in the T cells that also are part of the microenvironment in bone marrow and the defective T cells lead, give us defective support and then clonal expansion of uh, uh, CD8 positive cells. Uh, and also uh, there has been discussions about if there is an antigen, a virus or uh, something that can lead to T cell expansion and subsequent alterations in bone marrow microenvironment and chronic inflammation, which then causes genetic errors in the progenitor cells. Uh, we, are, uh, we all agree that there is chronic bone marrow inflammation, especially in low-risk MDS, and um, chronic uh, innate uh, immune signaling <coughs> has been shown to cause inefficient hematopoiesis and high cellular turnover, and inefficient with um, a lot of apoptosis, but still high uh, cellular count in the bone marrow, uh, which uh, could lead to a series of appearances in the progenitor cells um, and also recruit uh, the regulatory and suppressive immune cells that are inhibiting this inflammation but then also inhibiting the anti-cancer uh, immune surveillance of uh, uh, the bone marrow. So um, toll-like receptors um, have already been presented. Uh, they are uh, involved in the innate immune system and identify pathogen-associated molecular patterns and um, uh, host-derived damage-associated molecular patterns. Um, and we, we already heard about the allergens. means. Uh, these are, are very important uh, to react on different uh, damage and uh, infections and are ex expressed on effector immune cells, stromal cell types, including endothelial cells and hematopoietic stem and progenitor cells. 
And enhanced or aberrant uh, signaling uh, can inhibit hematopoiesis. As we see in the clinic in the septic patients that can have cytopenia due to that. And also predisposes for hematologic malignancies. Um, there are many evidence uh, now accumulating uh, that uh, the toll-like receptor signaling plays an important role in MDS. I will not be able to go into detail of all of them uh, in the interest of time. Uh, but um, both the loss of inhibition of toll-like receptor signaling and increased expression of toll-like receptor and the mediates, uh, mediators in, in the signaling has been uh, described in MDS and in uh, MDS mouse models uh, and give them uh, MDS-like phenotype. Mm, I would like to focus on, on the, um, uh, the other means S100A9, uh, which um, has been shown to be increased in MDS plasma and uh, to uh, stimulate um, the expansion and activation of myeloid derived suppressor cells. Um, and the uh, S100A9 transgenic mice uh, accumulate myeloid derived suppressor cells and develop MDS like features. And uh, the haploinsufficiency of RPS14 in deletion 5Q that was previously mentioned uh, also uh, opposes the transition of immature to mature ureteroblast by inducing a P53 dependent ribosome stress and induces the expression of these other means um, uh, and uh, induced cell cycle arrest and apoptosis. So the, this uh, S100A9 uh, is a key signal for bone marrow immune dysregulation and hypoplasia in, in MDS. Uh, and uh, this was recently presented at ASH uh, um, by Farrell et al., uh, who showed that in uh, MDS, uh, it was 19 MDS patients uh, most of them had uh, RCMD, uh, and there was a high level of uh, uh, S100A9 positive cells. Uh, and this was decreasing uh, with an increasing blast uh, number. So in uh, rabe patients, this expression was a little lower, and then in AML patients, uh, it, it disappeared. And they, uh, in this cohort of patients, they could follow three patients who developed AML. So um, the first had uh, RCMD and then AML and that in panel uh, B there. Um, and, um, oh, sorry. Um, and the, uh, the patient number three is the one that has been shown here with uh, the site of uh, scattergram uh, with um, a very high uh, S100A9 in RCMD. Uh, whereas uh, during progression to AML, this uh, uh, percentage of positive cells is dec decreased and uh, the percentage of CD34 positive cells increase. Uh, so, um, and this was, this uh, CD, uh, sorry, this S100A9 positivity was uh, in many, many cells, but also uh, especially in the myeloid-derived suppressor cells. And uh, it has been previously shown by Shen et al. Uh, that uh, uh, S100A9 signaling through CD33 in MDS bone marrow is associated with MDS activation and suppressive function. And um, the myeloid derived suppressor cells express CD33 very strongly. And silencing of these other means could uh, rescue um, the uh, bone marrow um, with the, uh, promoting colony formation in bone marrow cells isolated from patients with uh, MDS, and also decrease the inhibitory effects of myeloid derived suppressor cells with decrease of uh, IL 10 and TGF beta immunosuppressive uh, cytokines. And we've shown that uh, these uh, myeloid derived suppressor cells uh, uh, can inhibit uh, both uh, uh, autologous T cells but also healthy donor T cells and inhibit uh, the production of pro-inflammatory uh, cytokines from these healthy donor cells. 
so there is a hypothesis that uh, myelodivide suppressor cells uh, might be uh, the bridge between the low-risk uh, MDS uh, microenvironment and um, the high-risk <coughs> with the recruitment of myelodivide suppressor cells towards the very pro-inflammatory environment where the cells uh, inhibit uh, the cytotoxic T cells through nitration or nitrosylation of T cell receptors through um, inducing proliferative effect, uh, arrest in cytotoxic T cells by depriving them for L-arginine and L-cysteine, and uh, by inducing Tregs through the production of uh, TGF-beta and IL-10, uh, which then would lead to a more um, anti-immuno, or it would decrease the immune surveillance uh, in the bone marrow and uh, lead to expansion of myelodysplastic clone. And uh, just to link to the previous talk, uh, the mesenchyma stem cell type 2 have been shown to have similar uh, properties as uh, myelodyrid uh, suppressor cells um, and also inhibit T cells and stimulate the uh, immunosuppressive cells. Uh, so we look at MDS as a dynamically evolving disease, even though de novo AML and probably also de novo high-risk MDS can occur uh, due to this uh, accumulation of uh, uh, mutations and uh, um, increase of blasts as the disease progresses in one-third of the patients. And we divide um, between low-risk and high-risk based on IPSS and IPSSR score. Um, based on the cytogenetic findings, uh, number and severity of cytopenia, and uh, uh, percentage of bone marrow blasts. And I have uh, here summarized all the findings uh, regarding lymphocytes and all the different cell types in MDS. Um, it has been extensively uh, investigated. And um, what uh, is really, to su just to summarize it all, is that the low-risk MDS is dominated by inflammation and high-risk MDS is dominated by anti-inflammatory uh, cells and mediators. I uh, would not have time to go into detail on all these uh, cells, but like in, in natural killer cells are increased in low-risk MDS and reduced in high-risk MDS. And um, uh, the myelodivide suppressor cells are increased in both low-risk and high-risk MDS, but even more in high-risk MDS. Um, and the, the dendritic cells are decreased both in low-risk and high-risk MDS, but they are, there are less of them in high-risk than in low-risk. And when you try to differentiate monocytes to become dendritic cells in vitro, this is more difficult with the MDS-derived monocytes than uh, monocytes from healthy donors. Um, also cytokines, so the soluble immune mediators, have been investigated in MDS. And just to briefly <laughs> summarize, uh, we can see the same pattern. Uh, with a pro-inflammatory cytokine profile in low-risk MDS and uh, anti-inflammatory with high IL-10, TGF-beta, and soluble uh, IL-2 receptor in high-risk uh, MDS. Um, so just to summarize uh, MDS uh, immune pathogenesis, uh, we like to look at it as um, a, a dynamic uh, process from where the bone marrow in low-risk disease has high levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha and the pres high presence of uh, T-helper 17 cells and more pro-inflammatory cells, uh, we see the oligoclonal uh, cytotoxic T cells already in low-risk MDS, and they can inhibit uh, the uh, erythropoiesis and myelopoiesis, and if you inhibit those cells, then you can rescue uh, the bone marrow, uh, the hematopoiesis in the bone marrow. Mm, and um, the pro-inflammatory uh, signaling through TNF-alpha and upstream toll-like receptors 
is already shown on very, very high level in low-risk MDS, whereas this is decreased and diminishes in high risk and towards AML, where we have more anti-inflammatory environment and immune escape of the malignant clone and increased number of blasts. And so, thank you.